Welcome back to the Neutral Zone. Today, we're going to be continuing along with our 2024 college football preview series. Today, we look at, take a look at the Ohio State Buckeyes. Um, obviously, my dad's favorite team, a lot to say about them. One of the biggest transfer portal classes um, in recent memory, really. Um, so really excited to see what the um, Ohio State expectations are from my dad's perspective that he's a fan and a lot of you guys who are going to view the video. Um, but as always, if you're new to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, um, and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. Uh, but, Dad, let's get right into it. Um, well, kind of looking back at last year's prediction, um, funny enough, I got their exact their exact story yeah, right. Really like good. I, 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 the only game I predicted them to lose was a Michigan game. Obviously, mm -hmm. not the bowl game. We didn't talk about a bowl game but because uh, we had them going to the playoffs. But the only game that they lost was the Michigan game was the one I predicted. You obviously had them 12-0, and 0, rightfully so. It was a really good game. Um, but what was your takeaway from last year's season? Yeah, no, I mean, Michigan beat them again. Michigan is a – or was a very good team last year. Uh, that was a senior laden team um, with a lot of experience and their own style. And uh, we just couldn't beat them in the trenches. So they got us again last year. Uh, I, I don't really hold the bowl game against us. Um, I think last year was a lot about uh, our inadequacies at the quarterback position uh, with Kyle McCord. I just never seemed to truly click. Uh, and Buka was hurt a good part of the season. Trevion Henderson was hurt a good part of the season. But it, it, the offense never seemed to get rolling. That defense was was great. Uh, I like what I saw from the defense. And obviously, I like uh, what I see this year. Yeah, it's funny. So I kind of watched back our um, 2023 series. And it's mm -hmm. kind of the opposite. You were saying before the season how the defense had question marks, obviously. But now it's it kind of flipped. I mean, the yeah. offense really struggled more the, more so than the defense did. And when I say struggled, it's to a certain extent. Obviously, they weren't a bad offense, but they struggled in, you know, of what we have seen historically from Ohio State. I think Kyle McCord didn't pan out. Ibuka was out for a little while. Marvin Harrison really was all they had offensively. I mean, running back, the running back room was injured throughout the entirety of the season yeah. pretty much too. Um, so a lot of in and out there. Um, but kind of let's get into the next slide. Well, let me go back. So they're the number four team coming into ESPN, um, FBI, projected about 10-2. and two which is surprising to me um, with a 24, 25% chance basically to win the big 10. Um, obviously the biggest loss is the Marvin Harrison jr. Loss. Absolutely. Um, but you bring in Jeremiah Smith, who is a five-star wide receiver. Mm -hmm. um, you bring in Caleb Downs, who's arguably the best player in the portal and Quinton Junkins, who's obviously the, arguably the best player in the portal. So um, with adding, you know, in my opinion, the best, the now the best player on your offense and now the best player on your defense through the portal, I think that only does, you know, it only helps. Quinshawn Junkins, in my opinion, is the best running back in college football. I think Caleb Downs is the best safety in college football. Best DB, we can even say, arguable with Will Johnson and those guys. But I think Caleb Downs is going to have an immediate impact in the secondary. Um, I think the defense is going to build off what they were last year. You bring back Denzel Burke. You bring back JT. You bring back uh, Jack Sawyer, who was a leading sack um, leader on this team last year. Um, I just think overall the defense is going to be a lot um, yeah. a lot better when you when you bring in a guy like Caleb Downs. But offensively, I think they're going to take a step forward. It's still, you got to see how Will Howard looks because we're now we're plugging in another quarterback who I guess hasn't been there, you know, for very long. So I want to see how it, it kind of develops offensively. Um, but we said this in last year's preview: you can really plug in any quarterback, and they have the talent around them to succeed. Um, we didn't see that so much last year with Kyle McCord, but I think this Ohio State roster is a little bit deeper than it was last year. Obviously, you lose Marvin Harrison, but it's still a deep roster. Yeah, I mean, I like where we are. I like what we got coming back. The big question is, is what is Will Howard? Can he be a step up from Kyle McCord? I believe he can be. Uh, but that is, that's the end of the question. I think we have the talent around him. Obviously not having Marvin Harrison is going to be a big deal because he was a true number one. I The question is, can Mbuka be a number one? Or, and let's remember, there's a, a, a gang of talent around him. Now, Will Howard, coming from Kansas State, again, I don't think has the same level of talent as Ohio State, uh, was able to put up 2,600 yards, 24 touchdowns last year. For us to be good, we need those numbers to, to almost double. Again, I'm not going to say the 2,600 yards, but we need much more productivity from that position than what we got last year. The weapons are there. As you mentioned, that backfield. Uh, with Quinshawn Judkins, with Travion. I think the receivers are there. When you go Tate, Ennis, Jeremiah Smith, and Buka, the receivers are there. The line is there. A uh, couple players off the line, but again, Ohio State gets five stars uh, all the time, so that's plug and play. 
that defense is mostly back. I think we, we lost like four players in our in our two deep. Um, so a bunch of players from that defense came back. This should be the year. Um, it all it all really stems down to do we good get good play from Will Howard and that quarterback position. I think he has the weapons around him. I think he's a, a dynamic talent. He has a little bit more ability than Kyle McCord has and the ability to run uh, when we need to. I think that was missing last year. Uh, uh, Kyle McCord didn't have the ability to take off and get a first down with his legs. It was all on his arm. So I think the fact that Will Howard does have that ability gives defenses something else they have to be concerned about. So when you have all those weapons uh, and then you have a, a, a dual threat quarterback, a big, what, 250 pound quarterback who's going to be hard to take down that only really kind of um adds to the offensive weaponry this is a, a about as complete of, of an ohio state team that we've had what i really need to see is does Mbuka step up as a true number one receiver or is that jeremiah smith or is that carnell tate or is that brandon enos but does somebody step up to replace the yards that we're going to be missing from Marvin Harrison. We need a, a thousand yard receiver, a go-to guy, that guy. I, I think there's four options to be that, but do one of them truly step up and, and take the claim, take the throne as the Ohio state wide receiver, number one. So I have a question. So we talk about Will Howard, obviously Julian Sayan transfers from Alabama after mm -hmm. recruiting, you know, not, or committing not too long ago. You have Devin Brown. Um, you have Aaron Nolan. Is Will Howard the true bona fide number one, or do you still feel like there's controversy at all? So there's still so so Ryan Day is not named a number one. And from everything I'm hearing, Julian saying saying is playing well, uh Devin Brown is playing well, which is why he has it. But just given uh the experience that Will Howard has, uh the dual threat weapon that he is, I I, I I'd be very surprised if Will Howard is not our day one starter Th yeah. in this, but it's just, I think the problem is where we are in college football with the transfer portal. There has to be concern because I think you have three or four other guys that can go start somewhere, right? Julian saying could probably go start at some place, some power five or power four. Now uh team, he could be a starting quarterback. Same for Devin Brown, same for, Air Nolan, um, maybe not keyholes, but so how do you keep all these guys? And maybe, he's, maybe uh, Ryan Day is playing that a little bit, but I suspect that Will Howard is going to be our day one starter. Yeah, I'm excited to see kind of how it it transitions over to the you know the back end of the year, yeah. um, because I mean we saw McCord last year. I wouldn't say struggle, but he didn't he didn't play what we he didn't play like we what we thought he was going to play. Right. So I think if Will Howard struggles early, do they move on quick? Um, like how long yeah. of a leash does he have? Just because, like you said, this is a really talented team and the window of opportunity is is really now. I mean, I don't think Judkins is going to come back after this year. I think if is going to be gone, Denzel Burke's going to be gone. A lot of the defense is going to be gone. So this is really the key window to make that that playoff run, that deep playoff run. Absolutely. Um, so I do think the quarterback position, like we said in a few of the other previews, is the most you know vital position for Ohio State this year, in my opinion. Um, but yep. moving on to to obviously their 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 prediction, I think this one was pretty obvious. If they watched, if you guys watched the Oregon one, yeah. um, <laughs> I think that was the only game that I had uh, Ohio State losing was obviously the Oregon game. I think Oregon goes undefeated. I think it's a 50-50 game. The only reason why I gave Oregon the edge is because we, like we said, it's in Austin Stadium. It's in Oregon. I think it was the other way around. I'd, I'd favor Ohio State. Um, I think Michigan is going to be down this year, even though it's a big time rivalry. Um, I would expect Ohio State to win that game pretty handedly. Um, no disrespect to Michigan, but I, I mean, I was it was obviously last year. I thought Michigan was the best team in the country. Yeah, I mean, you picked them last year, so yeah, yeah I don't think I just think can... I just think Michigan is going to be losing entirely too much. Um, so I, that's why I just think I favor Ohio State. They have a better team. The Penn State game is going to be tough, very tough yes. at Beaver Stadium. Yes. Um, so I think if I had to pick another game, obviously the three floor games are Oregon, Penn State, Michigan for me. I'm assuming it's the same for you. Same, yeah. Okay. I, um, yeah, I, I would be shocked if they lost. And Ohio State sometimes does that. Iowa's always a tough game. Michigan State has had years where they're a tough game. We always sometimes have issues with Purdue. Uh, but I'd be shocked if Ohio State dropped 
any of the games outside of those three. Those three, I wouldn't be shocked. Um, I, 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 I'd be a little upset if we dropped the Penn State game. I'd be very upset if we dropped the Michigan game, but I wouldn't be surprised by that. Um, but anything outside of that, that's again, as you mentioned, Will Howard, right? If 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 we lose the Michigan State game. I think Will Howard's probably pulled if if we lose the Iowa game. Will Howard's probably pulled if he's starting quarterback at that point. So now I will say I think it plays into Will Howard's favor that the Penn State game is so late. Yes. Because I think, I mean, we've talked a lot about the Penn State, you know, atmosphere and the whiteout. That's going to be a whiteout game. So, you know, the fact that you're playing on the road at a hostile environment, I think Will Howard and what, that's week eight, I think, yes. or maybe might even be week nine, depending on when the bye is. Um, I think – by that point in the season, he'll be settled in. He'll kind of have chemistry with the wide receivers. Judkin should be rolling. Travion Henderson should be rolling. So I, I do favor them in that game as well. But I think that's going to be one of the games of the year. Um, I do have Ohio State going 11-1. and one. I do have them going to the playoffs. Um, and I have them playing Oregon again in the in the Big Ten title game. I don't know who I favor in that game. Um, just because that game's obviously going to be in Indianapolis, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it's, and, it, and, it, won't and, be, and, it won't be a road game for – well, it'll technically be a road game for Oregon, if we're being honest. Yeah, because um, that, that is still – a, a Midwest. Well, one people from Columbus can drive to Indianapolis much easier, obviously, than people from Oregon. Um, I would suspect if that is the game, and obviously, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but if that's the game, I, su- I would suspect uh, that that crowd is 75% Ohio State to 25% Oregon just based off of, of, of the geography there. Yeah, so, I mean, it's going to be fun. I've noticed after or as we've been doing these previews, a lot of these teams are going to end up being, you know, 6, 7, and 0, which is yep. going to create a lot of big matchups through week 7, 8, 9, 10 around there. So yep. then this is another one of those situations. Well, that's what I love about this schedule for Ohio State, right? We, we, new quarterback, uh, a couple of new. How do we work in uh, Quinshawn Judkins? How does that work with Trey? There's some questions on the offense. I think the defense is pretty set, but there's some questions on the offense and how does that work? I like one that we start off with three games that should really get the chemistry rolling. Those three games, you know, are are games where one, I think we get to see Will Howard, but hopefully we get to see Devin Brown and Julian Sayan as well and and see what they look like uh, before we get into that big 10, those big 10 conference games. And then even still, I think Michigan state's a little bit down. Um, Iowa's kind of one dimensional before we get into the Oregon Penn state games, uh, later in the year. I think that really gives Will Howard or whoever the quarterback ends up being, it really gives them the opportunity to get rolling, get some chemistry with that offense before we hit the meat of that schedule. Yeah. The toughest tests really start for the Michigan state and the Iowa game. Really? I don't really consider that tough, but that's the first, you know, true game that you have to line up for, I think. Right. Um, But let us know in the comment section, what you guys think about Ohio state and the Buckeye season uh, coming up Um, as well as make sure you guys subscribe, like the video, hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. We're almost at 1100 subscribers. So please join our community. We talk college football every other day. We're going to go live every single Sunday as the season kicks underway. Uh, Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Peace.